Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about how to fill your calendar. Because we all need that. If you have a company or you're thinking about even getting into it, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If this is your first time here, what's up? I'm Jersey. Nice to meet you. Make sure to have a look around. Hopefully you dig it, and hopefully this episode is better than a cat video. Uh, Or at least hopefully it just is a good way to spend some time. But if you're one of the cool kids, if you are somebody who watches every episode, listens to every episode, thumbs up on the YouTube videos, and of course you buy your supplies through me because it's shameless plug time, well, thank you. It is because of you that I get to enjoy brand name mustard on my hot dogs. Thank you so much for that. Um, Actually, yeah, French is his brand name, right? Yeah. Anyway, if you want to be one of the cool kids, A, you can get a sticker. That's the old one. Uh, That is the new one there. It's a holographic, super fancy special, limited edition, and all the other catchy words that mean special. Let me know. I would love to be your rep and put your orders in my cell phone. You can take it down, write it down, save it, put it in your phone. My cell phone is 862-312-2026. Yes, that's my cell phone. Shoot me a text. Say, yo, Jersey, everything is in my cart. Let me put that order in for you. It costs you nothing extra. It's way easier. And you got a guy. Plus, you get a super awesome limited edition sticker that all of your friends, and I'm saying all of them, will be extremely jealous of the certified cool kid sticker, to which they don't know what it means or anything. But anyway, get the sticker. And if you like stickers, check out American Window Cleaner Magazine. Because, yeah, American Window Cleaner Magazine is awesome. And you get a sticker sheet in every single issue. You want to buy sticker sheets? We have them on the site. If you want uh, to get a subscription to the magazine, which would be absolutely amazing, get a subscription. It's super cheap and you get a magazine with window cleaning stuff, supplies, reviews, pictures, posters, and of course a sticker sheet every single month mailed to your door at awcmag.com forward slash sub. Get a subscription and be awesome. That's all. Go do that. Anyway, so uh, shameless plug time done. We are talking about filling your calendar today, and this is probably one of the best efficiency, I don't want to say tricks or hacks, focuses that I've ever done, ever in my life. And it's filling a calendar. Because here's, let's, let's, let's lay everything out. If you're a one-man show or with employees, you have X amount of time, right? We'll say eight hours a day. Yes, I know, sometimes we work 10 or nine or whatever. We'll say for even numbers, eight hours a day, five days a week. I don't want to work Saturdays and Sundays. Maybe you do. That's cool. Your number is going to change, right? 40 hours a week I have with one guy. The best way to be efficient and make that work is to be 40 hours of work. Now, if a job that used to take me two hours, I can get it done in one hour, Now, it's still just one hour. I can fit more in there. Now, I'm making more money in my 40-hour week. If my drive time has been a lot, or maybe some days I end at like 3, or, you know, maybe sometimes it uh, it rains, I don't have anything to do, and all of a sudden my 40 hours just turn into like 26 hours. That was the max I could do that week. Yeah, but next year, man, I'm going to get it. Next week, I'm going to get it. Next month, I'm going to get it. You have to fill your schedule. Now, on a separate note, if you're looking at getting employees or you're ever going to add an employee, think of this. When you add an employee, you need to have more work than one person can handle or encroaching on so much work that one person that you could split it to two. Now, if I only have 40 hours of work and I bring on another person, the max they're going to have is 20 hours a piece. That's great to bring things in and then you got to hustle to get more, right? That's how you bring in employees. In order to do that, if I could implement certain things and all of a sudden my 40 hours of work turns into 20 hours, I got 20 more hours I could fill. Where before, when I wasn't running efficient, I filled all my 40 hours, I got to hire a new person. 
But now if my 20 hours that I have that came from 40, I could now do more work. Anyway, what I'm saying is efficiencies are huge. That's what makes a successful company. If I could make, say, you know, $80 a man hour every hour as opposed to, you know, $75 and most hours, you're going to make a ton more. You're going to run more efficient. You're going to have a more successful company that hopefully is stronger, right? Efficiencies are really it. And it all comes down to calendar. Your calendar, if it is booked 40 hours every single week, you're full. If you get to do that work on that calendar and you're actually right and you are doing 40 hours, you're full. Then we work on efficiencies. But how do we fill that calendar to 40? That's what we're talking about today. So thanks for hanging out with me either way. Um, first off, what I want to tell you about is something called a float, uh, float board. A float board. A float board is just a whiteboard that I have behind my desk at my office. And what it has is tape on there, electrical tape, to kind of make, you know, kind of like a spreadsheet looking thing. And on there I'm going to have the date, I'm going to have the uh, job, and I'm going to have the name, and I'm going to have the dollar amount. Those four things are all I have on there. Now, what the float board is, is a board of, of things that can get done when nobody has to be there. Now, inside and outside windows, I need somebody to be there, right? Yes, I know they can give you a garage code or leave you a key, but eh, I need somebody to be there, right? In in in, If you're going to be in someone's house, they need to know when specifically you're going to be there. If I'm doing a gutter job, which, like I've said before, gutters suck, but if you're doing a gutter job then no one has to be there. You're going to go on the outside with a ladder. You're always going to knock anyway and say, hey, it's Jersey from XYZ. I'm here to do your gutters. I just wanted to give you the heads up. We're going to go ahead and take care of that, and I'll leave an invoice when we're done. Right? Now, a job on a floater board will always be called uh, to collect the funds if no one's home. Because as soon as we're done, I'm collecting the funds. I'm getting that money or I have a card on file, which is even better. But what I do when people call and they have gutter cleaning or uh, X outs only on a, a case and crank outs or anything like that where I can kind of fit it in, I'll let them know, say, okay, great. Well, I got you on our floater board. And what that means is our first available time, we have an open slot. We'll get that taken care of. We'll always knock and let you know that we're there. We don't want to scare you. Uh, but even if you're not, we're going to go ahead and leave that envelope. And all I need then is a card uh, for you on file. Uh, once that service is done, we will charge that for you so you don't have to worry about it. But remember, we do have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you get back and there's anything you don't like, please do let me know. People give me a card. Now, Mrs. Jones, gutter cleaning is on that board. I'm not putting it in the schedule, Right? If my floater board fills up, I will start scheduling those floats, but I won't put it in a floater board. And the reason is, is because a lot of times, hey, uh, so-and-so canceled, or uh, we got that job done way quicker than we wanted, or she just switched it to out, and it's like three. Okay, let me, they call me, my uh, crews will call me from the job and say, hey, we got time, we got two hours, cool, I'll look at my board. See what I got, dollar-wise, you know, what is it going to be, about two hours? Okay, here's the one, here's the address, blah, blah, blah. Now, in their folders, I'll give them the float. But if they're already over that way, or close, they could just go on site. If they're not, they'll always come back to pick up an envelope. I want to make sure that they get something and left there that we were there. The same thing, I'm going to call them instantly, let them know everything's done when it's good. But that float board is holding jobs that fill floated spots. I will have weather issues where we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee and a seven-day rain guarantee. But when it rains, it doesn't always rain all day, right? Especially in the summer, you'll get a big rain and everybody will cancel and all of a sudden the sun comes back out. And all of a sudden it's like noon and every job canceled no matter what guarantees you had. But if I have a float board, 
Now I can take all that work, put it back on and send them out and get other stuff done. It's jobs that don't require people to be there. I could put them anywhere. Filling that time is so flipping valuable. I couldn't tell you how many times that we've gotten something and filled up a week because of the float board. If the float gets too uh, busy, I'm going to start putting things on or offer a Saturday for people if they want. But the float board, we pull stuff off there almost every two days, I would say. Because something ends, they get done a little bit, or somebody comes back and goes, hey man, it's summer, sun's out, we're, we're good to have another job. Work as much as you want. You want overtime? Here you go. Go get it done. Right? Having a floater board will save you from having dead spots. Dead spots will kill you because remember, in an eight-hour day, if two of those hours are not being filled with work, you're not getting another two hours. You're on to the next day. The next day should be eight anyway. You don't get those two hours back. It's not like, oh, I missed two hours today, so instead of eight, I'm going to have uh, 10 hours worth of work tomorrow. Because then I miss four hours of work, you're not running 12, right? So float board, have it if you don't. It's so simple. So simple. And people love it. Because sometimes they get done right away if there's nothing on the float board. And they're getting pushed in front of other people who scheduled stuff. So it's really, really nice. Uh, reschedules are another thing that help fill your schedule. Now, if somebody does cancel, remember, I always have people who are farther down the line. I can call them and I'll always let them know if we have something, especially when we're booking. Remember, we've talked about this in the past a bunch of times that if somebody calls and they, ah, man, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can uh, afford that or do that. Maybe I'm kicking them out till the middle of summer. I'm not going to move those ones. But if somebody's booked out three weeks from now, I'm not super happy on that either way. You should have better staff, something to make that a little bit tighter. But what I'll do is if somebody does cancel, I'll go, okay, guys, just hang tight. I'm going to figure this out. I'll call the people who are farthest. Now, it's kind of like the line of the grocery store, but opposite. If they open a new register, they take the person who is next in line because that's the fair thing to do. But in this calendar and scheduling, I'm not going to take the person who we're supposed to be doing tomorrow because they're already going to get done tomorrow. And now i got a hole to try to fill instantly tomorrow. What I'm going to do is start pulling people off the very, very, very back of that list. I'm going to call them. I'm going to call them. They answer. I'll let them know. Hey, I'd love to. We have an opening today. We know you were pushed out. I'd love to get you in today. Now, the reason is, is because I can fill three weeks from now a lot easier. It just brings that back in a little bit than it does to do tomorrow. Reschedules will fill that space. You always have to do that and always have those in there. During the call, especially if people are having a haul or they're out there three weeks, I always say, hey, if anything drops, I'll make sure to call you and uh, we'll try to move you up. But this way, you at least have a scheduled slot. Sometimes people are like, oh, no, don't worry. Three weeks is fine. And I'll note that in the calendar on them that uh, they're fine waiting. Then I won't call them. I'll go to somebody else, right? But moving people up a lot of times, oh, yeah, I'm actually home right now. Cool. Some of the guys, come pick up your new invoice. They'll come grab the new invoice. I'll have it all done up for the new house. They'll go to that one. They filled that spot. I didn't lose a day uh, productivity in the day. I just didn't, right? Another one is commercial. Commercial window cleaning in general, which again is off of what we kind of just talked about, but commercial window cleaning fills slow spots in your pre-fall and your pre-spring. What do I mean by that? Well, depending on where you are, certain months are slower. In North Carolina, February is not the fastest, busiest, right? Our, our winter, air quotes for Mark Tanner, our winter goes through till uh, uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th, right? That's kind of our joke. So before that, it is slower. Normal people aren't calling. It's not really booked, just like winter. Even though it's nice, you can work year-round, but it's not as busy, right? Same thing with like July, August is pre-fall, in Wisconsin, those months changed, of course. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take commercial jobs, and a commercial job is one that gets done every six months or even quarterly. Mostly it's every six months. Big office buildings, things like that. And I'm going to put them in those slots. And the reason I put them in those slots is because I'm already slow. I have the time to do it. I need the influx of cash, and it fills that schedule. 
Think about it. If you see, you know, a year's worth of schedule and you're looking in, in your head and every day that's full is colored and everyone that's not is blank, look for the blanks. Look for the blanks and fill them. So what we do is all of our commercial, we have what we call uh, our hell week. It's two weeks, hell weeks. But it is uh, two weeks in uh, pre-fall, pre-spring and pre-fall, but uh, that all of the big buildings get done in those two weeks. It is a hustle. But we know it's coming every year because I schedule it. So we're like, ah, two weeks to hell weeks, man. You guys, just so you know, what do we need? What do we got? What do we, right? They know it's coming up. When it comes up, they're working their butts off those two weeks. They're getting their brains back in it. They're, they're everything back into window cleaning because they've you know been a little bit slower. It influxes and we get everything done. Having commercial fills that time. If you don't have commercial, you can't fill those dates. The other thing about commercial that's very hard is when you are running. I know guys that are literally running out like four to six months right now. If a commercial building calls and you're like, oh, all right, well, we'll get you done in six months. Now, all of a sudden, you're into the next season. You want people want their houses done yesterday, and now you got this big, like, you know, three-day project. Putting that in your time is much, much better. Now, there is one thing I have to say about commercial, and I've done this quite a few times. When somebody calls on the building, I say, okay, great. Uh, you want it done twice a year? They go, yep, yep, okay, let's sign up. Perfect. Well, it is July here. So we will be getting your first cleaning done in August. That's okay. For your first cleaning, then it'll be every six months from there. And usually they're like, yeah, yeah. Or they'll be like, oh, you know what? We actually have this big board thing coming. Well, then I can move them and try to fit them around and get things done for that first one. And I will schedule the next time when I want it. So that first one may be a little tricky to get into that six-month rotation of pre-spring, pre-fall. But I'll always ask them in 99% of the time. They're like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Great. Awesome. Well, before we do, we're going to go just check. We'll let you know the dates and things like that so you can give letters to your tenants. And we'll go ahead and make, like, go on to what you can do, right? But we always will do it that way because commercial can fill spots. A lot of times people really are be like um, commercial is a big job to float payroll and they tuck it into these other ones. Well, you're taking over the slots from houses. Remember, don't step over pennies. Don't step over dollars to make pennies by doing that. And remember, if, if by adding something in the wrong time of schedule, you push these houses out another three weeks, you're going to have a lower cl- close rate. In order to stop that and capture all of the jobs, money, and customers you can, move those to the times that work best. Remember, this is your company. You get to dictate when and where you want all this to be. So, very, very cool. Another one is route. Now, I would love to see you have a solid route crew of trucks, guy, single person, whatever. Because if they are just running route, that one person will just be busy on their normal route. They know what day, what they're doing, where they're doing. They're just getting familiar with that. It's going to be amazing. But when you start off, route has to be done with everything else. Now, your first route job, you can't start a route on one job because then that guy's just sitting around. So we're going to be tucking those into our calendar. And when it starts, there's a rotation. So it's every two weeks. It's every, you know one week or every four weeks you planning that and putting it in there so that it generates the next year's worth of those now you're scheduling houses around that route now your scheduler if it's you or somebody else knows where that first job is the second job wherever that is they know about that area they're going to put houses maybe around there when you do a route job You're then going to sell all of the route around there every single time you do that job because the only way you make money in route is to have a nice tight route. You have to do that. If you plan it that way, now you're putting houses around there, you're still having time to sell, put the blocks in there, and grow that route. Eventually, you'll have two hours of route at that same area. Now, maybe you'll have another two hours like a mile away. Now you got... A route day every two weeks, that's four hours. Plan it in the schedule. This is how you're building that route up, right? 
route are little jobs, little blurbs of work that can get filled in anywhere that need to be. Now, eventually, and once you can get a full week, route is absolutely amazing because every single week, if you can fill two weeks of biweekly work, you just fill the entire year. Now you got a guy whose only job is to just do route work. That's awesome. So good. So good. You're guaranteed money every single week. It's nice. You got to get fired a thousand times in order to not have that route, which is possible if you suck, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. But until that fat until that point, take it and use it to fill the holes. Remember, a solid calendar is going to make you more money, more efficiency, more money. More money and efficiency, stronger company, right? Cool. Another one's, uh, let's talk residential. Not a filler as residential, but let's talk about how to schedule in residential. Now, when you are new, it's easier to do as you're filling things in, but do you work in uh, two different cities or do you work in a large area? Do you have like an hour round trip between places? Yes? Well, then what about, say you work in town A and town B. Town B is a 45-minute drive from town A. Now, if you go to town B for a $200 job, and then you drive back to town A because the rest of your jobs are that day, you just wasted an hour and a half. Two guys and a crew, you just wasted three man hours of driving. Wouldn't it be nice to make money those three man hours? What I'm saying is, if you have two areas that are far apart, schedule those together. If you can, say every second Tuesday, we're in town B. That's how it is in the calendar. That's how it always will be. Now, when you're filling it up and you still have town A stuff, you look at that and you're like, hey, uh, just so you know, uh, Tuesday's full, but we do have Wednesday. Keep it full for that. Once you start filling up, You're going to have enough to fill that time. Now, if you're three weeks out, except for Tuesdays, you only have one job on one week, no jobs the other week. So start filling it. Obviously, it's not working for you, right? But if I could do one day, that means that I drive down there once and do the rest of my work all day, then I can come back at the end of the day. I'm going to be more efficient than if I ran out there, ran back, then ran out there, then ran back because I got town A and town B in the same day. I'm talking efficiencies and planning. Now, in the scheme of things, there are programs that will put houses closer together. They know where they are on the map and say this is the best route to put it. But in houses, it's pretty hard. I could tell from different areas a little bit better and what I'll do farther out if I am two weeks out. I'm not going to pet plan boom, 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 boom. I will plan like Monday, here's a sprinkle. Tuesday, here's a sprinkle. Maybe in different areas or something I kind of deem close. And then when people come in, I can tell what day to put them on just to kind of help that schedule. Right? If you're scheduled out a day, you know, you just don't have work, but, you know, tomorrow. Then it's a little bit harder because you don't want to leave those big pockets open. Right? Efficiencies come when you're ready for the efficiencies. But planning it that way, planning your drive time, your scheduling, where they are located, all that fun stuff is really important. Because the other side of that is in your residential is if you are in town B, what if there's overflow? What if there is floater board stuff in town B? Well, they're not going to drive 45 minutes back to get an envelope, go all the way there, right? If they're in town B every other Tuesday, I'm going to give them one of the jobs. Hey, if you guys got extra time, here it is. Let me know and I will let them know, right? It's just pre-thinking to help make sense of drive time and lost efficiencies and lost efficiencies come anywhere it just happens to be in the scheduling a lot of times people don't even realize it because it's just like a a force of habit that they got to do that right filling your calendar not only getting it filled which that's on you i got lots of episodes on like that kind of stuff but that's on you but it's filling it right so that it makes sense you have x amount of jobs Right? You could get more, but you'll still have those jobs then. Putting them in the calendar depends on if you're three weeks out or two weeks out and you're making the same exact amount of money in three weeks or two weeks. Wouldn't you rather make that amount of money in two weeks than three weeks? 
that's where all these kind of efficiencies come into play. And filling the calendar is really, really that. Another one is add-ons. Add-ons can fall under float, and they can also fall into gaps on the schedule. So if I am in a day where my guys may finish, I always put a little bit of time into the job just for uh, to kind of keep schedule. But if they get to a job and all of a sudden they say, hey, I have to, uh, I, I need this, uh, my house washed. I want to I wanna add that on. Well, the guys will look at it and go, okay, we're going to really have to hustle on this job. We have this amount of time, but we're going to be over schedule. Okay, great. We can do that. They'll call me. I will then reschedule the rest of the day and just move it. Just say, hey, just so you know, we're, our first job is going to be running about an hour late, uh, but we'll be there uh, hopefully even sooner than that. But I just want to give you a heads up. Shooting them messages so that the rest of the day knows is great, but you're already at the job. Don't take an add-on and put it as a floater if you can fill it that day and just kind of slide things out a little bit. If you go to some place and you're supposed to be doing an outs of the windows and instead they decide to do a roof cleaning, pressure washing of the concrete, hardscapes, house wash, well then go, awesome. What we're going to do is just reschedule this whole day to fill in the blank. Then we can get everything done at once. Because I can't move everybody in that one day a whole bunch. But what I can do is once they reschedule that guy and he goes, oh yeah, no problem, man. I didn't, I didn't know I wanted all that done, but I do. Okay. Well, now I can send them floater stuff to make up for that time they, they're missing. And now I have a full day down the road. But if I could add on add-ons, then I'm just going to strengthen kind of that calendar. I may move people, but there's always going to be that little pocket there where maybe the next job's an hour, but then because they're fast on job one and two, that job three doesn't even change their time. And I just added something on. Right? Add-ons help fill the calendar just like anything else. But remember, float board is a big one. Float board is the biggest thing that, that has added to the strength of my calendar. Really, float board, adding commercial where it needs to be, pre-spring, pre-fall, try it, I'm telling you. Route, fill in the gaps. Residential, make sure you know when you're planning them Plan them close together if you can. And of course, add-ons. Make sure your add-ons are added on when they can be to fill the gaps. It's just being smarter about the calendar. A lot of times people just need the calendar filled, but they're not smart about where everything is in the calendar, and they're running less efficient than they can be. And we talk about efficiencies. Every aspect could be more efficient, but the calendar, that is your time. That is your income. How much money can I make in eight hours? Well, I can make more by moving things around or being smarter in how I schedule. Why wouldn't I not do that? You don't get the days back. You'll always have the X amount of jobs, but where you put them in the calendar is really where your efficiencies come from. Right? At least that's my thought. But thank you for watching. And like I said, if it is your first time here, I hope it didn't suck. If it did, I'm sorry. They all don't suck. Go back, watch a bunch of them. But more importantly, I want to be a rep. I want to be your guy, like your insurance guy, like your, you know, I got a guy. I want to be that guy. Give me a call. Let me put your orders in. Shoot me a text. I do way more than text, uh, more through text than I do calls. I'm on the phone all day long. So if you don't get me, text me, text me. Don't leave me a message. Text me. It's the 21st century, I swear. Uh, but uh, my number is 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. So like I said, text away, my friend. Uh, I'd love to put orders in. Another thing, if you are shopping, throw it all in your cart. Make sure you're logged in. But throw it all in your cart and then just be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it through. Super easy. You got a guy and it's a virtual high five and I get credit for it. It doesn't cost you one penny extra. In fact... It probably makes it even easier on you because I'm just such an easy guy to deal with. But anyway, 862-312-2026 is my cell phone, so please do let me know. That would be absolute awesome sauce. But until next week, go out there, get a good calendar, but more importantly, be epic.